All right, so in this video, I want to talk about what are known as one-to-one -one and onto functions. So eventually, I'm going to start talking about this in a linear algebra setting. We'll talk about vectors and linear transformations. But at the beginning, you know, this is something I'm going to do it a little more basic and even just something, you know, if you're in algebra, you could understand this, you know, high school algebra. So, okay, so a linear transformation is a transformation T from a, a vector space V to W, and it's called one-to-one -one if T maps distinct vectors in V to distinct vectors in W. So if you start with a unique vector, you know, if you start with two different vectors, when you apply that transformation, you get two, two different outputs, is all it says if it's one-to-one. -one. If the range of that transformation equals all of W, T is called onto. So the idea is, if you take any vector in, in the vector space W, there's some vector in V that's going to get mapped to it. So you see this uh, this next little these next little diagrams even in algebra again so let's talk about this and we'll talk about a couple just basic examples to hopefully to make this a little more um, a little more familiar to you so okay so the first one we've got our vector space v and our vector space w and our transformation t so a one to one function so if i start with you know the dots represent distinct elements in v suppose the first element just gets mapped right over okay so the first vector gets mapped to a distinct vector the second one gets mapped to a distinct one and the third one also gets mapped to a distinct one this would be one to one and onto because every distinct vector gets mapped to somebody distinct and I've only got three elements in my set W, and all of those have a corresponding vector in the domain. So that's one to one and onto. Let's look at my next example here. So suppose my first vector gets mapped to the first element here. Okay, and let's take another one and just map it over here. And let's take our third one and just map it down here. This is now one, it's still one to one because distinct elements get mapped to distinct outputs. It's not onto though because you have vectors or you have elements in W that where there's nothing that's getting mapped to them. So not everything in W is sort of getting hit. So that means it is one to one in this case because they're distinct, but it's not onto because you're missing some stuff. So in our last example here, suppose my first element gets mapped to the first one. Suppose the second element also gets mapped to that first one. And then my third element just goes to that other one. This is not one to one, and it's not one to one because I have these two distinct elements that are going to the same element, the same vector in W. So that's, that makes it not one to one. It is onto though because I only have two elements in W and each of those have a corresponding vector that's getting mapped to them. So if you think about this just in terms of 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 a you know algebra, an example of a one-to-one -one and onto function, you know, suppose we have the function f of x equals x to the third. So that's going to be my function. That's your transformation. You're taking an element in R1, some number x, and it's going to get mapped also to R1. So really we're doing just here a transformation from R1 to R1 is what we're doing. Uh, if you want to write it, think about it in, in a linear al algebra setting. And I, I think some places I'll, I'll omit it, but again, all of our transformations here are going to be linear transformations. So x to the third, recall, looks just like that roughly like that. If I start with distinct elements, so here's some x1, here's some x2, they get mapped to different elements on the y-axis. That makes it one-to-one. -one. Okay, so if I start with distinct, distinct elements at the beginning, I get distinct y-values out at the end. So this would be one-to-one. -one. Notice it's also onto because if you take any element along the y-axis, you can always find some corresponding element on the x-axis that gets mapped to it. So that would be one-to-one -one and onto. Let's look at another one. So let's look, I think our next one was it's one-to-one -one but not onto. Suppose our function f of x 
Suppose f of x equals arctangent of x. So we, we start with some number in R1, and we take the inverse tangent of that number. Well, if you recall what arctangent looks like, it has an asymptote, a horizontal asymptote, at pi over 2, and also at negative pi over 2. Arctangent, hey, looks like that, and it looks like that. So this one, again, is going to be 1 to 1, because if I start with two distinct elements, say x1, x2, if I start with distinct elements, I get, I get, if I start with distinct x values, I get distinct y values out. Okay? There's, there's no, there's no uh, two different x values that go to the same y value. So this is 1 to 1, but notice it's not onto, it's not onto the, you know, onto R1 because you're only getting values uh, greater than negative pi over 2 and less than pi over 2. So we're only getting this little, this little interval of, of values out from negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2. So it's not onto because, for example, there's no, there's no element that gets mapped to, say, up here to positive 10. Okay? So in this case, it's not onto, but it is 1 to 1. And I think our last one, we had a function that's not one-to-one -one, but is onto. Well, again, there's lots of these. I think I said let's let f of x equal x to the third minus x. So that has x-intercepts at 0, 1, and negative 1. So again, not quite to scale here. x to the third minus x looks something roughly like that. Okay, so this is not one-to-one. -one. It's not one to one because there are distinct, you know, su suppose I look at this y value. Suppo suppose, okay, that's the corresponding y value. There's some x value over here that gives me that corresponding y value. But notice there's also another x value over here that gives me that same y value. So I have distinct values that I start with, x1 and x2. But when I cube them and then subtract that, that, that value x, I end up getting the same y value out. That means it's not one to one. But again, notice it is onto because the domain of this, this function, it goes from negative infinity all the way to positive infinity. So it is onto. So just kind of three examples. So this is kind of the basic idea of one to one and onto functions. I should say if a function is one to one and onto, it has a special name. It's called an isomorphism. I'm not really going to talk much about isomorphisms in this video, but they turned out to be very important in mathematics. The idea, if a function's one to one and onto, the idea is usually it ends up preserving some important structure to, to the original, um, from the original, well, I guess I should say, it preserves structures from, from one vector space to the other, and that ends up being important, but we'll talk about that another day. So let's look at two examples now. Let's look at an actual. Let's do one where, uh, two examples where we want to determine if our transformation is one to one and if it's onto. Okay, so here's example one. Now I should give a little disclaimer here. There's, there's other ways to do these as well. You can actually start talking about the kernel of the transformation um, and, and do some stuff with that. Again, we'll look at this some, some other time, but here's just sort of a, a straightforward algebraic way to, to determine if something's one to one and onto. But again, not necessarily the most efficient at all times. Okay, so we want to know if the transformation is one to one. That's the first thing we'll start with. Okay, so suppose that, suppose we start with uh, some element, we'll call it x sub one and y sub one. And I take the transformation of that, well, according to our formula here, it says we would get two x sub one minus y sub one, and then we would have x sub one plus two y sub one. And let's suppose I start with another, another, um, another vector, and I take the transformation of that. So the transformation of the vector x2, y2. So again, we're going from r2 to r2 here. Well, that would be 2 x sub 2 minus y sub 2, x sub 2 plus 2 y sub 2. But let's suppose, let's suppose that those, so some, I'm starting with what I think are distinct vectors, but let's suppose that those two, the transformation of those two vectors, I end up getting the same output. So the question is, 
are these what I started with were they unique at the beginning so suppose the outputs are the same what we're gonna do is try to determine if this is a one-to-one -one function so if the transformation of these two vectors is equal that would mean that the outputs are equal so that would mean well that so that would mean that 2x sub 1 minus y sub 1 and x sub 1 plus 2y sub 1 that equals well 2x sub 2 minus y sub 2 and x sub 2 plus 2y sub 2 so these two vectors the outputs end up being the same so this would be the result well now we can just do some algebra here so the corresponding entries would have to be the same so I would know that 2x1 minus y1 equals 2x2 minus y2 and likewise I would know that x1 plus 2y1 equals x2 plus 2y2. Now there may be some more efficient ways to do this but this is the way I did it and it worked so I, I called it a day. So I'm going to take my first equation here and I'm going to solve this for y1. I'm just basically working with a system of equations is all I'm going to do now. Okay well if I solve for y1 I could add y1 over to the right. On the left I still have 2x1. I could subtract 2x2 and then I would add y2 so I've now taken my first equation and solved for y1 and now all I'm gonna do is just plug all of this stuff in for y1 into my second equation okay so if I do that I would have x1 plus 2 times y1 which is what we just solved for so 2x1 minus 2x2 plus y2 and that's going to be equal to x2 plus 2y2. Now at this point I saw this and I said well let's just see what happens and I started multiplying it out so I've got x1 plus 2 multiplied by 2 I'll have 4x sub 1 minus 4x sub 2 plus 2y sub 2. On the right I still have x2 plus 2y2. Well let's see what's going to happen here. Okay so notice what I've got here I've got 2y sub 2 and 2y sub 2 so I could cancel those out from both sides. If I combine my like terms, notice on the left I would have 5x sub 1. Now I could add the 4x sub 2 to both sides and that would give me 5x sub 2 on the right side. Well if you divide by 5 that means that really x1 equals x2. So it says, ah, if you've got the same output here, uh, the x coordinates, really what you started with, those, those first coordinates, those first elements were actually the same thing. They weren't distinct at all. And if we take this and if we plug, you know, this into either equation, you know, take either equation, if you replace the fact that x sub 1 and x sub 2 are actually the same, well then 2x sub 1 minus y1 equals, well, 2x sub 1 minus y2. So now I'm just replacing the fact that x sub 2 is really the same thing as x1. Well, again, you can subtract those from both sides. And that says negative y1 and negative y2 are equal, which means, hey, y1 and y2 are equal. So what this says is, it says if you, if you end up with the same output, it says if you, if you end up with the same output, it means that the inputs had to be exactly the same. And this means that it is one-to-one. -one. So if the outputs are the same, it means, hey, you had to start with the same input. That's the only way it can happen. Okay, so this is kind of a common little technique to show that things are one-to-one. Are -one. You kind of use different variables, you set them equal, and then you show at the end of the day they really had to be identical at the beginning. Okay, so the next question is, is it onto? Okay, so is it on to? Okay, so I'm going to take some generic vector. I'm going to call that AB. And that belongs to R2. I'm going to figure out is there some element under this transformation. So I want to take the transformation of some vector XY. And I want to be able to get out the vector AB, whatever I pick out. Okay, well. Again, under our transformation, it says we have 2x minus y, and then we have x plus y. That was the, the formula for our transformation. 
And that gives us A and B. And again, the same thing. We're just going to make a little system of equations. So 2x minus y equals A. x plus y equals B. Um, which one did I solve for? It really doesn't matter here. I think actually what I did, uh, so you could solve for one or the other. I actually just took this and added these together. So I've got 3x equals a plus b. So I'm just doing a system of equations. 2x plus x is 3x. Negative y plus y, hey, those cancel. a plus b, okay, is a plus b. So if we divide, we'll have x equals a plus b over 3. And now if we go back, now if we go back and substitute that into, I use the second equation. So it says x is going to be a plus b over, over, excuse me, what am I doing here? So x is going to be yeah, a plus b over 3 plus y, that equals b. So I'm going to do the same thing here and solve for y. So if you solve for y, you can multiply both sides of this equation by 3. That would give us a plus b plus 3y equals 3b. So I'm just multiplying again both sides by 3. And if I solve this for y, the first thing I could do is subtract b from both sides. So if I subtract b from both sides, I would be left with 2b. And then I could subtract the a over as well. And then if I divide, I'll get 2b minus a divided by 3. So what this tells me now, it tells me that this is actually going to be an onto function. And what do these two outputs mean? It means that if you wanted to get this vector a, you know, this vector a, b out as your solution, it says what you should start with, it says the x-coordinate should should have the formula a plus b divided by 3, and the y-coordinate should have the formula 2b minus a over 3. So for example, for example, suppose, suppose I wanted to take the transformation of some vector so that at the end of the day, you know, maybe I get the vector, I don't even know if I picked one, suppose I want to get the vector 1, 1 out. I want to get the vector 1, 1 out. Well, it says the transformation that will do that, it says the first coordinate, x, it should be a plus b divided by 3. Well, a plus b would be 2 divided by 3. And then it says the y coordinate should be 2b minus a divided by 3. So in that case, 2 times b would be 2 minus 1 would be 1 divided by 3. It says if you take the transformation of this vector 2 thirds uh, and 1 third, with components two-thirds and one-thirds, it says you'll get the vector one-one out as your solution. So it's now giving me a formula that says, you know, pick your favorite A, pick your favorite B, you know, and, and I can find you a corresponding vector that's going to get mapped to that vector. So this now shows that it is onto. So hey, this transformation that we started with is in fact a one-to-one -one and onto function, which means again it is an isomorphism. Okay, so again, there's, there's more efficient ways to do this, but um, this is kind of a, a generic way that, that you use in other settings as well. So let's look at one more example here. Suppose I have a transformation from R2 to R3 where I take a vector with components x, y, and then I get uh, a vector with components 4x, x minus y, and 0. Same thing, I want to know if it's, if it's 1 to 1 and is it on to. Well, the same thing, if, if, if I take a transformation, so we'll, we'll assume maybe, hey, these are these distinct? I start with x1 and y1, and I take some other, uh, some other vector with components x2 and y2, and I take the transformation of that. But I get the output is the same. Well, that means that 4x1, x1 minus y1, and 0, it says that's the, four, the same thing as 4x2, x2 minus y2, and 0. And now you can do the same thing. So this one's a little bit easier. If you set up your system of equations, it says 4x1 equals 4x2. It says x1 minus y1 equals x2 minus y2. OK, so 0 equals 0. But from this first one, it's easy to see that, well, if you divide by 4, that x1 has to equal x2. 
And if x1 and x2 are the same, well then we could just subtract them off from both sides. And that means that negative y1 equals negative y2, which again that means that y1 and y2 are equal. So yes, it is certainly one to one. Now the question is, is it onto? Okay, well this one's pretty easy because it can't be onto because um, if you take a, a you know some vector in R3, suppose I examine, you know, suppose you consider so the vector, suppose I look at the vector with components 0, 0, and pi. That's certainly a vector in R3. But by definition, this transformation says that no matter what you start with, it says this last component, by definition, is always going to be equal to 0 because that's how we set it up. So it's not going to be onto because, for example, this vector that lives in R3, there's no vector from R2 under this transformation that's going to get mapped to it. So all the vectors under this transformation all have a last component of 0, which means we can never get vectors in R3 where the last component is not 0, again, just by construction. So this would be one that is, in fact, not on 2. So okay, that's my, my expose on one-to-one -one and onto functions. I hope this makes a little bit of sense. Again, you can uh, uh, talk about the kernel and do some other things to, to, to consider some of this stuff, and we can do some of those. But um, as always, I hope this helps. Feel free to post any comments and questions. Hopefully either I can steer you in the correct direction or somebody else out there can.